Hello and welcome to The Trade on this Thursday. Well, let's uh, first take a look at what uh, uh, international news is revealing at this point. And Japanese authorities seriously concerned and on high alert about the yen's rapid decline, saying that the uh, currency's, uh, well, in fact, the currency's top uh, diplomat there, uh, Masato Kanda, uh, escalating warnings that as the currency languished at its weakest level in almost 40 years, the biggest US banks also would have enough capital to withstand severe economic and market turmoil, as according to the Fed Reserve's annual stress test showed. Uh, but uh, firms face steeper hypothetical losses this year due to riskier portfolios. Amazon hitting $2 trillion in market value for the first time, becoming the fifth US company to surpass that level as optimism around AI and potential interest rate cuts this year have driven demand for tech-related stocks. And U.S. crude and gasoline inventories rose as demand softened, while distillate stockpiles fell last week. That's according to the Energy Information Administration. All right, let's uh, get into the charts that matter with a focus on currencies. Plenty happening in that space. Nick Twidal joining us from ATFX. Nick, welcome. Thank you very much. Of course, big focus on the yen. I mentioned there at the top, uh, Japanese authorities seriously concerned. So they're talking the talk. Are they walking the walk yet? Well, not yet, no. So I think that's, and, and after last night's move through that magic 160 level, which proved to be not so magical in the end, um, we've approached 161 and we still haven't seen any action from them. But um, I think what a lot of people are looking for is, is that rate of ascent in the dollar yen. And if it does start to speed up, then I think they will come in. Um, what a lot of people in the market are looking at now is, is of course, we've got the PCE data in the US tomorrow. And yeah. there's almost this um, school of thought that, that Japan, the MOF and the BOJ are hoping that we're going to get a lower print for PCE and that's going to drag the dollar down a bit. But most people don't think, even if it's a slightly lower print for that PCE inflation data in the US, that it's going to take away that trend too much from dollar yen because there's, I think there's 75 ticks in a, in a month at the moment um, to be earned by being long of your dollar yen. Um, and, you know, I've, I've brought this trade out for you. I think this is the first time I've ever brought a trade out going that far back for everyone yeah, here at right. Ozbees. Um, so, yeah, it was a little, bit of a little bit of an exercise, that one. But it just goes to show you, I think we're at 38-year highs all the way back to those, I think they're 1986, that far end of the, uh, yeah, wow. far end of the line. Um, and, like, these are huge levels. So there's no doubt about that. I, I think if we don't see too much change from data coming out, we will see the Bank of Japan come in for the MOF at some point soon. Um, I think if we do get a stronger print in PCE, they will come in and they will knock it down and they'll knock it down hard. Well, we might just say we've got the alley up there, but do they have a line in the sand then as such? I don't think there's a line in the sand, but I think if we go anywhere near the 165 level very quickly, then, then they will come in. I think they're happier seeing it, just the rate of descent for the yen, um, they need to slow it up, and they're kind of like. When it, and obviously, there's been a hell of a lot written about this this week. It's it's like they just they're kind of waiting for Fed interest rates to come about. Um, I think they've also got an opportunity coming up at their next meeting as well, which which we were waiting for them to cut back on their QE, um, which they didn't do as hard as as we thought they would. Um, I think we're going to be looking to see, and maybe there's a rate, maybe there is a rate hike from the BOJ next time because of the currency level. So there's a lot of interesting facts going on at the moment. We've not seen massive volatility. Well, because so they can't rely on the Fed, can they? Because clearly the Fed's just pushing it out further and further. Well, well, and also the US has just kind of named them as a, as a currency manipulator as well, which right. I'm not sure that's making any difference to anyone, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so it, like fascinating times ahead. Um, that 161, yeah, every, every time we see one of these breaks, and we saw it last time back in April, the next big figure becomes that line in the sand that we're looking at. Um, but, but 160 broke nice and easily last night. Meanwhile, Nick the Aussie. Yes. Now, off the back of that hotter than expected inflation read yesterday, what are you seeing there at the moment? With obviously, this is increasing the possibility that the RBA could, in fact, hike rates again. I, I think looking solely at that inflation number that they will hike again. I think there's one more in them now. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping on the bandwagon probably a little bit too late. Um, but once again, for the Aussie dollar, I think we talked about it last time, we're kind of stuck between two central banks that are both relatively hawkish relative to the rest of the world. So 
Um, I think I hit a, a lot a few weeks ago. It was like I think you want to play the Aussie from alongside on the crosses, and they are starting to break the crosses as well. So I should have brought a few charts. It's very rarely I get it right from week to week with you. Um, but for the Aussie dollar, I think we're going to be kind of range bound as well. But a key indicator will be, and I'll come back to that PCE number because we know that's the Fed's favoured intra- inflation data. If we get a decent move in that PCE, it's that dollar side of the equation that's going to move the Aussie rather than the Aussie side. Um, the 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 perfect storm, of course, would be a much lower print for PCE after we've just had higher CPI. That will take the Aussie, and that will break those lines that we were just looking at, and it's probably going to then, um, probably longer term, will we'll threaten 70 cents. All right. And then what? Do we wait for, well, I guess the, the key for the RBA ahead of its next meeting is that uh, quarterly inflation print at the end of July. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and probably the RBA and most householders are hoping for a little bit of a lower print. Yeah, <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> Meantime, um, look, eyes on the on the euro also, particularly ahead of the French elections this weekend. Yeah, we've got a few things coming up in the euro. Um, so French elections, like it's been a bit of a shock to the market. That's the main reason why euro's taken such a dip over the last few weeks. We're sitting on very, very sort of like strong support lines, but um, anything coming from that that's going to put even more pressure on the euro you break down through those recent lows and that trend line support and we're going to be looking back at hitting that 106 very quickly and then I think it opens up the way for those lows all the way down 104 again Um, we've got to take the other side of the equation into into consideration as well which is that US side and that's that PCE data again Mm. we're a bit boring because we keep going on about it but it's been talked about since Monday Um, once again the opportunities I think in currencies at the moment are are massive because we could get these perfect storms Aussie euro and obviously dolly yen trading intervention or non-intervention is probably the way forward but for that I'd still favor buying dips over the medium term well Nick and obviously traders are loving the volatility we are yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nick thanks so much for joining us mate. thank TFX. you